If you want to learn how to reball a Samsung sandwich board, this is the video for you. This is an S21 Ultra. It came in here for water damage, data recovery, and I found the issue was inside the sandwich. So I had to split it, fix the problem, and then now it's time to reball it. So I'm gonna show you guys the full process of reballing, including what tools I use. So if you guys enjoy these type of tutorials, make sure you guys are checking out the links down below. Check out my t-shirts. This really supports the channel as well. Also, if you're in need of data recovery, like if you need to get your pictures and your videos out of your phone that's water damaged, send me a message through my website and we'll send you a quote as soon as we get it. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so basically this is the inside of a S21 Ultra board. It actually has like no water damage inside except for right here. So the corrosion, the liquid got into this area and like literally ate away this whole part. So I used a grinding pen and basically grind it away that, that short. And let me show you what that looks like on ZXW. So this is the line that was shorted. This is basically the VCC main of a Samsung board. I don't know what they call them on Samsung. So if you guys know, let me know down below in the comments what's the proper name for this line. But you can see how it's highlighting the whole board. When I was injecting voltage, uh, this part of the board was lighting up. So uh, I saw some corrosion on the side of the board and I tried to just kind of clear it out using hot air and um, my tool just to try to dig in and scrape it away, but it was not cutting it. So I decided to split the sandwich and sure enough, this whole area on both sides was just eating away. It was like really bad. It was also on the top side of the board. So this is the top side of the board. I had to use a grinding pin here as well because it was just so bad. It was all burnt and shorted within the layers. So I, Grinded it away, and now the short is cleared. So here's the interesting part. This, this whole section here is part of that same line. Actually, no, this one right here. So right here, it kind of came out to these two pads, and through here, and through here, and you can see it's OL. Now the same line, you can see how it connects, is the same areas I was probing. I actually touched this one first, that's why it, it read as short. But if we follow it along these lines right here, this is the same line and then this component here. So if we check that, right, we have a, we have a reading here, 360 something right here as well. But we don't have continuity. You can see I'm probing from here to here and it's gone. Now it could be because something within here got eaten away or it could be it happens through the bottom board. So uh, looking at you know what what happens on this circuit i noticed on the bottom board i do have continuity like this whole section here to the rest of the board this is all uh, continuous but on the top board is not and we don't really need this because if we follow along where does this go this ends up here on this side right so on this side of the board there's this pad here which is this one here and there's no component here so there should have been something here from the factory, but it's not. So that doesn't matter. So if we have this whole section disconnected, we are probably going to be fine. There's probably going to be no issue leaving this disconnected. Like I said, this is for data recovery only. We look at the rest of the circuit. This connects through here, this connects through there. It doesn't really do anything. That's probably a connection to an antenna. Right, so if we follow along the traces, we're going to be missing this voltage for an antenna, this connector here. But we don't need that. We need power button and a battery connector. So this is irrelevant for data recovery. So we can just leave that disconnected. And what I'm going to do is UV mask that area off. I'm going to UV mask this one as well. You can see the three dots that match up with the line. So we're gonna be checking that area for shorts. You can see it's not shorted. Nothing shorted here. So we're good. Um, I'm pretty sure that part of the circuit is getting power from somewhere else. So we can leave that section behind. Now, as of right now, what I've done is I've used this solder wire. This is 138 Celsius solder wire. It makes it really easy to wick uh, to apply to the board. This is a cold board. So sometimes it, it can get hard to get solder on there. So I've already done that. You can see all the flux everywhere. I basically ran over that whole area with my iron, linked to my iron and all my other tools low. 
The goal is to coat it with the low melt. So when you go to wick it, it'll be really easy to wick. Now this reball does require wicking to get the best results. Like I said earlier, if you guys need your data recovery, send me a message through my website and I'll send you a quote as soon as I see it. So now let's go ahead and wick. This is the wick I would recommend. It works really well. Uh, I can't find this exact one, but there is a smaller roll. This one was like 30 something dollars, but it's definitely worth it. You'll see how well it performs. I'm curious how long this video is going to be. Let's go ahead and wick. And because it's low melt, you'll see how much easier it is to wick all this. The factory solder of this board is really high temp, just like an iPhone 12. It is like 200 something degrees, so it requires a lot of heat to do. I'm just going to skip over the part where, um, where that area is. I'll come back to that and clean it up and deal with that later. So with the Action T210 handle and the knife tip, JVC knife tip, you can see how well this thing is wicking. By the way, I, I just uh, did some new settings on my audio for this recording, so let me know what you guys think, if it sounds better, if it sounds worse. Uh, I'm always trying to improve the quality of these videos. So once you get a bunch of solder on here, you gotta snip off so you have a, a new fresh piece to absorb some more solder. By the way, these little skinny long ones are all ground. So those are always gonna be tough to wick, but as you can see, with the right iron, the right solder, and the right flux, and the right wick, you can do this pretty easily. You know, soldering, it's all about the right techniques for the job. And, and a lot of times that comes from experience. When you're doing this long enough, you learn to adjust your techniques to be more Basically do things better, faster, cleaner, you know, higher success rates, warranty free work kind of stuff. Alright, we're almost done. We're almost here at the finish line. You can tell when your wick is too saturated, when it's leaving behind kind of bumpy pads versus flat pads. Now one trick to cleaning up flux, you can see how it's all kind of burnt, is heat up the board a little bit. So right now I have my hot air station with no nozzle because that's what I needed to split it. We're also going to need it to install it. So I'm going to heat it up a little bit. The goal is to get it really warm. And then you're going to have a Q-tip and just wipe it off dry. It'll clean up really well when it's hot. Once it cools down, you'll see it starts sticking. This is to get rid of the 90% of the flux. All right, so I got most of it. Now we come in with isopropyl alcohol, 99%. Then you can come in and do a deeper clean. Deeper cleaning. Now I think this thing misaligned. I'm gonna have to fix that. Oh boy, that's not going to be fun, but shouldn't be a problem. Pretty easy. Basically just push it back into place. Nothing's about, one thing that sucks about sandwiches is 
this interposer stuff. The same heat you need to separate it is what moves the interposer itself. Alright, so it's amazing how many techs will ask me what is this liquid I'm using. I see it a lot in the comments and it's like it's just alcohol. It's not some something magical. This isopropyl alcohol. 99%. Let me know in the comments if you guys want me to link my alcohol as well. Alright, so here's those nasty pads. Like I said, we don't need to repair them. This is just for... We can technically swap this out from a donor, but I don't have a donor readily available. So, we're just gonna just repair it. Luckily, those pads are not uh, critical for booting, or basically to get it to boot for data. Alright, so we're gonna use some UV mask. We're going to apply it. Basically the goal is to just avoid um, just touching anything. We're just kind of like a wound. We're just going to seal it all off. And avoid any uh, complications from it. We're basically, one way to think of it is that we're amputating this uh, part of the circuit. This is all ground too, so all around it. All right, and then UV lights. Don't look at this with your bare eyes. It is uh, not good for your eyesight. All right, it should be good. All right, so now to figure out how to fix this interposer. All right, so I'm just gonna put a, the board in a different position. That way I have no obstruction to that part of the board. So you can see how it's kind of crooked, like shifted down a little bit. Right, so this whole the spacer here, it's called the interposer, is shifted down. So first I'm going to use some hot air, no nozzle, uh, just to warm up the board. Although it's already heating up. Let's add some flux to the bottom. Things that I can add it from the inside as well. And let's see. Do I have to dig through my donors to fix this? So I'm just going to heat it, go in circles, and try to bump it back into place. What sucks about Samsung's is there no jig, like an eye socket, to test or just get data with it without desoldering, so you have to reball it. So that's why uh, we're doing this here. Oh, there it goes. That looks way better. Actually, it snaps back into place, so that's good. You can see the alignment thing there. There's one up there, too. And this looks way, way better. I think we're good. Let me get one more Q tip. Make sure the pads are clean. All right, so next up is the top board. This is where basically the connectors are at. So let's UV mask this whole area. Just mask it off. The same thing, it's the same UV liquid. And just actually put it over here. And just close off this wound here. So hopefully you guys, uh, make sure you comment down below if it makes sense what I'm doing here with 
uh, disconnecting this part of the circuit from the rest of the board. We're isolating this section because it's not required for data. Goal. That's the thing with data jobs. We're not fully repairing it to be a fully functional phone. We're just fixing it enough to turn on, to pull the data. There's literally no other way to get data out of these phones. Starting from, well, at least with Androids, starting from Android 7.0, so like uh, Galaxy S7 type phones and newer, the data is encrypted uh, by default, and it's encrypted in a way that there's no way to get data from it from the chip directly. There's no way to uh, break that encryption. So the only way to get data is to get it to turn on and unlock the screen because that pin code or, or swipe pattern or whatever is what encrypts the data. So once you type that in, then you can access the files because that, that is the key to the data. So that's another reason why we need your pin code for when uh, we need data recovery. I know it's weird to give out your pin code, but it's just like going to mechanic and dropping off your car and not leaving your keys. You know, you just have to trust them that they'll take care of the job that it's there for and that's it. And you can look at our reviews. We have a really good reputation. You know, uh, it's one of the things about uh, data recovery so you got to get someone who is reputable you get some like random repair shop who has a 3.5 star rating you might uh you don't know what they're gonna do with your phone if they're gonna destroy it or if they're gonna do other stuff with it you know sometimes the price like they say you get what you pay for so we are specialists at this so consider choosing us. You can look us up uh, here on YouTube, on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. We show our work everywhere. We're very public. Our goal is to recover your data successfully. And that's what we do for a living, so we depend on, on a good reputation. All right, so now I'm gonna use my iron and add low melt to this as well. I'm just gonna use, I'm just gonna uh, solder it here on the napkin. Seems like a little easier. I'm trying to get it into a board holder. The board holder might block uh, certain spots where I'm trying to solder. So I'd rather just do this. Now be careful with the small components that are located here on this top board. You don't want to suck them up into your iron. Like there's a resistor there. Nice thing about putting this on a napkin is that it allows us to easily move the whole board without physically touching it. Because there's a bunch of flux on there and I hate getting flux all over my gloves. All right, so just be careful, go around the perimeter. Keep your iron on the outside of the, the board. If you're trying to reach over the board like this, you're likely, well, there's nothing here, so I could do it, but if there's components nearby, you're likely to run your iron over them. So, there we go. Uh, have I gone down this? I think I already did this side, yep. Now I just gotta go almost at the finish line. Oops, I got solder on that gold perimeter. I think we'll be fine. All right, I think I got everything. So next step is 
the wicking. So we're gonna use the napkin here as well. But you can see it's moving around. Let me put a weight on the board so it can stop moving. And then I'll just kind of move it around as I'm working through, through here. I want to get them as flat as possible. If there's a resistor there, you got to watch out for. Technically, we could also do what is called a top board swap, where we just plug in or solder on a different top board. So there's nothing on this top board that is paired or unique to this phone. So we could just put any top board and it'll work. All the pair chips are on the bottom board. The other one that we already worked on. But this seems like an easy fix, so I'm just gonna leave it. Versus trying to, or not trying to find, but waste the donor. So these donors, we use them for CPU swaps, and I don't want to uh, want to keep the donor for when the next S21 Ultra shows up for a CPU swap. I don't want a butchered one. All right, so I'll just go down. All right, I'm actually gonna go upwards on this side. Uh, oh, that went pretty smooth. We're almost done on this side. Let's get this small side here. Now one thing is, and I haven't seen any other YouTube videos where they show how to reball a Samsung sandwich. So, I don't know, maybe this is the first one. At least the first one in English. I know there's always a bunch of videos in other languages, but this might be the first English Samsung sandwich reball video. Comment first if uh, you like this video. Or you could also comment Shiny Solder Balls to support and buy yourself a shirt that says Shiny Solder Balls. Want to support what we do here. All right, so now we gotta clean this up. Uh, once again, we get a, yeah, see it's not hot enough. Now this side, it's a little riskier to heat. So I'm just gonna go the traditional way. And you know what? Let me do this. There's way too much hairs out of there. So let me just brush it off first. You know, the alcohol helps soften the flux so it's easy to clean. We gotta make sure that all the paths are squeaky clean. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to get this back together. By the way, the symptoms of this phone before I split it was uh, via USB. I don't remember, but through a DC power supply, it was pulling like 46 milliamps before prompt to boot and it wouldn't prompt to boot. And then on the main line, that's the one I was uh, injecting into. I was getting a full two amps, you know, full, full short, full short to ground. And thanks to my thermal camera, I was able to find where it was located, sadly. I've actually fixed several uh, the Samsung sandwich boards where I had a short within the layers. This hot air and flux and then my uh, thin kind of spatula tool, I was able to get in between. Essentially, the way it works is 
there, there'll be like corrosion on like you know the pads are corroded together so I'll just like stab my tool in and kind of just move it around and it's enough to clear it but this time I was doing it and it didn't wasn't making any difference and then when I split it then I see why there was uh, too much like it had charred and, and, and burned through the PCB layers so it wouldn't have been fixable. Now I gotta reball this. I'm just glad I was able to dig out the short on here. So there you have it. The two sides are now wicked. And time to do the reball. Alright, so I got a new jig. Now before I would just manually reball it. Uh, without a jig and it was a pain to do but doable now I got the jig but the new problem is I didn't get the magnetic base for it so I thought I did so this jig allows you to place the board in here and lay it flat there's supposed to be a magnetic base to hold it all together but instead I had this tool one before without this I would just put it here and there's a magnet in here and there's like two sides. There's a one millimeter and a two millimeter. You can see they're a little deeper. So I would find the spot where it will lay kind of somewhat steady and then just manually line it up. You can see how the stencil uh, holds it. So if you want to buy just the stencil and manually do this, you can buy this from, I think, in your GAT or Mobile Centrix has this, I think. I'll link to it in the video description. Yeah, so you have to manually line it up and it's still kind of a little wonky and then just manually hold it and like try to get it all through and then peel it off. Now we have something a little better. And then I just put this on top of here. Now the magnet is not as strong. Well, I do have other magnets. Maybe I could stick one in there. Increase the magnetism. Either way, it's not as strong as I wish. It's weird because the the AliExpress listing did not mention anything about a magnetic base. So I bought like pretty much every Samsung sandwich jig there was. It was only like three dollars each, so I bought them all. And then when I got them, I realized I didn't have it. This is the Mi Jing stencil holder. I love that. Maybe that's a little sturdier. So this is the jig I use for iPhone boards and figure if I, the, more, the more magnets the better, although this one slides around, whereas if it was here, it's a little more grippy. But I don't know, if you guys have a better solution, let me know. So this one we don't wick, we just wick it flat. I mean this one, this one we reball, this one we leave wicked flat and then goal is to be lined up yeah i think we're still gonna have to hold it down but it's straight and the stencil is not moving so that's good that's all we really need and you know if you're gonna do this job you should be a master reballing technician <laughs> don't uh don't try this at home if you've never reballed it anything or if you never reball the sandwich, this is a uh, pretty complicated stuff. Not complicated, but it's about having the right technique. All right, so one of the keys to successfully reballing any sandwich is to use fresh paste. This is my 158 Celsius solder. It is uh, the solder X paste from Relife or Geelong. I don't know. I don't even know anymore, but this is what it looks like. And we're going to scoop in here. This requires a lot of paste, so you get a big blob. Then you get a clean cloth, and you want to dry it out a little bit. So you want to press it in. Depending on your specific paste, it might be a little more watery than this. Mine's kind of old, so it has dried out. So it makes it uh, really easy to reball. Then we transfer it to this spatula. So this spatula is non-magnetic. And this is what it looks like. 
Then we basically use our fingers to, to hold the stencil down while we apply it. So let's start over here. Press it down and just spread it out. Press down and like press hard to, to flatten it. The key is you want to create a little solder ball. Uh, I don't know. I can't figure out the right uh, word to use. But it's like little domes of solder. And by the way, you're going to get a bunch of paste on your fingers too because you got to hold this down while you're applying it. I hate it, but you know, have clean, clean gloves. Highly recommend you guys solder with gloves. I don't know why so many people don't. But that's just me. I'll link to my gloves. If you guys want a link to my gloves, let me know in the comments. I don't want to fill up the whole description with just every single tool. I'll, I typically only link the most common or the most uh, likely you'll ask about. So if there's something I didn't link, let me know. I'll, I'll add it. So we're just applying the paste. We're gonna do multiple passes, at least twice. This ensures we got a nice, like filled cavity of paste in there to get the best uh, results for reballing. All right, so now just gotta scrape all this flat. Now imagine trying to do this with no jig to hold the stencil in place. It's a nightmare. It's doable, but it's a huge pain to do. I've even done it where like I'll do one section, peel off the stencil, form the balls, and then uh, and then put the stencil back and then add more paste. Basically, like literally forming the ball section by section. All right, so once you get all the paste on there, you want to use another clean cloth that is not dirty and you want to wipe and essentially press down over all the pads. The goal is to kind of form the pad, the solder ball, through this method. We're shaping it. Alright, and then this is what my Clean cloth looks like you're gonna get a bunch of paste on there, but that is part of the process. Next is we're gonna peel off the stencil and we gotta do it fast and quick. Just peel it off as one solid motion. Uh, don't hesitate, otherwise you're gonna ruin it. So I'm gonna grab this end and then just peel it off. And let's take a look at the results under the scope. How bad is this? Uh, it's Pretty good for, yeah, see this is what you want to see, like little, uh, I don't know, let me know in the comments what do you guys think we should call these, like the formed. Now there are some spots that are going to be like this, where you have it all spread out. That's fine. Watch, you just heat it. When we heat it, it's going to all go into place. Trust me on this one. We're going to start off low, 330, no nozzle because I'm too lazy to put it back on. So take a look. We're first going to form. Now here's where that uh, UV mask is. I think I might just scoop it up with my iron just to avoid any, any issues there. We're going to leave that air area absent. Alright, so just heat. I might need to turn on my airflow. Oh, there it goes. Now take a look at this blobbed up section. If you do go slow enough, all the paths will go to where they belong. As long as you did the technique I showed you as far as Drying out the paste, 
you know, spreading it uh, properly. And then um, you know, pressing it down with the clean cloth, you're gonna get some nice results. Take a look at that. Look how nice that looks. All right, so we're just gonna go all around the perimeter until it's all fully balled up. Oh no, here's another uh, messy part. We just take it slow. They all just fall down to their pads. And if, it all kind of works itself out. Just like in our life, you know, if you just go with the flow, for the most part, Things tend to work themselves out. That's that's what's going on here. Look at that. No bridges, no everything looks even. And there we have it. The it's all formed. Now I'm going to suck up my iron. I mean, I'm going to suck that part up with my iron. I'm going to get this solder ball out of here. I might even uh, clean this up a little bit. I just want to make sure it's good. All right, so this is optional, but if you do see a lot of debris, basically like loose microscopic uh, paste in between, it's a good idea to clean it up. So once the solder balls have cooled down enough, you wanna scrub it down, make sure there's no loose uh, no loose debris that's gonna potentially call this short. Now I've never done one of these sandwich reballs for a repair just because of how much work is needed to do this. If there was like jigs and other stuff to make it easier, maybe, but right now there's literally no reballing jigs. Uh, well, there's no ice socket jigs and if I had to do this twice, it's already a, gonna be not worth it. But for data, you know, the price that you know we charge for data makes it worth it. All right, so there you have it. Now uh, we could also install the sandwich on here too, because might as well. It's a jig; it helps uh, keep stuff aligned. So first, I'm gonna preheat this whole area. And add some flux. Oops, this flux is getting really thick. I mean, it's spreading out really, really wide. And it's fine if it's all messy. We only need this to work like a few hours until the, the backup is complete. All right, so we got, uh, well suppose, I'd recommend a thin layer of flux, but uh, we didn't get that. We got a thick layer, that's fine. Just lay the top board. You know, the balls are solid, so let's just lay this on top. Is, it, can, is this gonna work? You know what? The board feels a little warped. But also, it should sit on here. There's no obstructions on here to keep it from sitting flat. So I, I think we'll have to just go with the flow and hope... Uh, oh, you know what? I think it's over here. 
on this side over here, I can feel it uh, rubbing here. All right, let's uh, try it. This is not gonna work. I, maybe later I'll grind out a slot for that. You know what? Let's do that. This magnet. It's holding the board. All right, so let's take a look at the alignment. The screw post holes are a great way to check your alignment, usually. That's another thing about these sandwich boards is the Samsung sandwich boards. It's really hard to see if you're aligned because the shape of the board is all weird. All right, you know what? I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to just go up a little bit in temperature and see what happens. I'm actually going to look at this from the side. I'm going to see if the, the board is snapping into place. No nozzle, like I said, look, there's literally no nozzle on here. And it looks aligned pretty well. So in theory, this should just fall right into place. So I'm, I'm starting off with the lower temp. Uh, I don't think this is gonna be enough to solder the board together, but I just wanna warm it up and see what happens. And then we'll bump up the temperatures if necessary. The reason why you want to go with no nozzle is that it'll, it's going to shoot out a wider, uh, you know, field of heat to the board. If you put a nozzle, that's way more concentrated. It is not uh, going to heat the board evenly. That's going to create a like hot spot or. You know this part is gonna get this part is gonna get hot and the other part is gonna get cold and vice versa and then it's gonna be not easy because you have to heat this whole thing all at once. I do see flux kind of bubbling. Let me see. Let me see if I can bump it. Look at that. It bumps. What about over here? Actually, it's installed. So, if it snaps like that, it means the solder balls have formed and the board is suspended in liquid solder balls. It would not snap like that without uh, without that kind of scenario. So let me let's wait it out, give it a minute, and then I'll come back and check. All right, so let's check the sides. And look at that, it looks pretty flat. It looks soldered on. From what I can see. All right, so first step is check DC power supply. This is a custom made cable kind of the the original cable that came in this broke so i just kind of cut a battery connector and soldered it on myself it's just positive and negative that's all we need and so we have 4.19 basically 4.2 volts live here at this connector so as soon as we plug it in we should stay at zero all of that zero now is this prompt to boots i'm gonna use the power button pins over here and that looks like a normal boot consumption. So this board should be good. Let's go ahead and test it in the housing. Now this is a my known good housing. You know, one of the reasons why my data recovery prices are, some people may think they're expensive is because we have to buy known good parts to do these jobs, you know, and there's a million models of these Samsung phones. So we have to keep all these in stock and you know, it's cost money. So it's not a, it's not like a free server or no cost to running this business. There is. All right. So, uh, and by the way, this S21 ultra will stay booted and powered on 
with the DC power supply the whole time. So I don't even need a battery. I just use a DC power supply. So let's uh, let's try again. I'm gonna prompt the boot to power button and let's see if we'll be able to get data. All right, well, no image. That's uh, it's not good. I need image for data. Let's see, maybe the connector is not. Let me turn it off. Turn it on. So this is the display connector here. You know what? Let's check it under the microscope. One thing I didn't check was the connector to see if it's nothing wrong with it. It looks fine. But uh, let's see. Maybe that part of the connector is not making good contact. So this is the display connector here. It looks like the gap is closed, although I could have shorted. I had that happen once. All right, let's troubleshoot. Uh, first, let's try some, just cleaning up the connectors with a toothbrush and ISO. Maybe it's dirty. This screen, I just used it recently, so I know it's good. Although it could have gone bad between now and then. All right, fellow, so solid click. Solid click. So right now we're doing the basics. No, no need to overcomplicate things. Let's try some basics. Too many people get way too uh, too deep, too quick. All right, prompt to boot again. Still nothing. There should have been a Samsung logo by now. All right, not to worry. We got another screen we can try, which is probably not the best screen to use, but let's just try it. And then I don't know if I have another one. Actually, I use the screen for a different job. All right, let's see. Let's try this again. Let's try it in a, another housing. Plug in. All right, so let's plug this in. USB charging shows. Five volts, 0.23 amps. Although I don't know if this housing is any good. All right, so this doesn't work either. Let's try this. Since we can't tell what's happening uh, with the battery, next trick is to use a DC power supply instead of a battery. At least we can check the boot consumption and see if it's doing anything. All right, prompt to boots. So boot behavior is there, just no image. Wouldn't be surprised if there's a sandwich issue. All right, so every you want to study is this connector because this is where the display plugs into. All right, so just to make things easy, I'm going to just show. So ZXW does not have any readings for this, but we don't need them. Well, they'll be helpful, but we don't. They're not critical. We can still diagnose without it. So what I'm going to do is check for shorts. around in general there shouldn't be any shorts in here on uh, these lines so i'm just probing the all the connectors in this uh, area i mean all the components All right, nothing there, that's charging. All right, so now I'm just gonna probe. See all the pads that are yellow? Those should all give me a reading or OL. If we have a short on one of those pins, we'll investigate and see what's going on. So I'm just gonna do a quick speed run on here. 
Uh, this is OL. All right, the second one, second pin, I think is this, goes to uh, this pin here. This is, I wonder. Oh, you know what? This might be it right here. Looking at this, there's a small little gap there. Yeah, look at that. Now that I can, now that I'm looking closer, I can see a gap. So let's do this. Let's see if we could fix it by heating it. All right. So what I'm gonna do is reflow this and press it down. Though this is a uh, not the best way to do it. I want a solid surface underneath. Well, there's a, a surface underneath that I could press down on. So I'm kind of resting it on that lip of this jig. And because this is low mount, it should be pretty easy to, to do. All right, I can see it moving, so what I'm gonna do is press down. And see if I can get those joints to flow. All right, now I'm gonna leave it upside down. Oh, look at that, I'm reading now. So I was getting OL, now I have a reading. But the board is hot, so let's cool it down a little bit. And just for good measure, while we're waiting for it to cool down, just from off the top of my head, this is main. It's not shorted. So I think we're good. Let me check the battery connector. Not shorted. All right, hopefully that was all. Hopefully that's all we needed to get image. All right, this cooled down pretty, pretty quick. I'm gonna use my known good housing first, just because I know it's good. All right, let's test one more time. No short, after prompt to boot is good. Oh, look at that. Finally. <laughs> oh. All right. So now we got to wait. Make sure it boots. Um, and bust out the USB hub so I can run a smart switch. Actually, I don't even need the USB hub. I can just plug in directly to the USB port uh, to get the data. Where is... Zero nine. Oh, all right. Now uh, we're making progress. Let's see, I have the pin code here. I got the USB drive ready to go. Oh. Here we go. Here we are. Here we go. All right, do we have touch? We do. And we're in. So, we have a problem. I do need the hub. I think I'm gonna use the hub. So, minor problem. The customer provided USB-A drive. So I'm gonna need the hub to back it up. But like I said, we can power the phone off of this so we don't have to worry about the battery dying. Uh, I don't know why it's frozen like that. But let's not worry about that. Let's plug in the hub. Oh no. It restarted. Okay. Hopefully that just 
some weird bug. Uh, I shouldn't restart. But let's see, maybe if I just leave this plugged in, it'll stay fine. Oh man. All right, let me have a different plan. All right, so I think I know what's going on. I think this is overheating and that's why it's shutting off. Cause it actually shut off on me even without anything plugged in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this heat sink here, it's basically a giant block and I'm just gonna clamp it down. And we're gonna see if we can get better results uh, with this. Now it might be a little hard for you guys to see, but I'm gonna press the power button. All right, we got the Samsung logo. Now I'm trying not to move so the cable doesn't unplug. It kind of unplugs very easily. Now off camera, I did get it to boot and I did get it disconnected and start the smart switch backup process, but it shut off on me. And now that I feel the board is like burning hot and this is a, like a real burning hot. There's a lot of techs who just feel any kind of heat and just assume it's hot. Uh, that's not the case here. So I'm gonna get creative here with uh, this setup. Hopefully uh, they don't have too much data and we can back it up ASAP. All right, so it unlocked, it booted. All right, we're in. I'm gonna go straight away to smart switch backup. As soon as I can get there. Settings. Scroll down to uh, right here. Counts and backup. External storage transfer backup. All right, I'm gonna plug this USB in. This is a Kingston. Uh, USB-C flash drive. Right now it doesn't detect anything. Uh, let me see if I can plug this in. All right, it's plugged in. Phone's still on. Oops, I clicked the button back. External storage transfer. There it is, USB. It's detecting. Sorry, this is upside down but I, I need to do this in a way where I can control it. Uh, 93 gigs, Jesus. All right, let's do everything. Back it up. All messages, transfer, back up now. And here we go, I'm gonna keep the screen on as well. And there we have it. It says it's gonna take two hours Hopefully this can survive. I actually did one like this recently that was also overheating. But it's starting. The backup is starting. So I think we're good. So there's a false alarm, me thinking there was still an issue. Uh, you know, who knows what's going on. The goal is data recovery and the thing is processing. As long as this lasts approximately uh, two hours, we'll be good and uh, we'll be done with the job. So if you guys enjoy these type of videos, make sure you guys are liking the video, smashing the, the subscribe button as well. You know, we cover all kinds of video topics uh, here on this channel regarding phone repair, data recovery, micro soldering, and all that good stuff. So make sure you guys are following me uh, on my other social media accounts as well. And if you guys need your data recovered, uh, I literally have my website in the middle of the screen. And if you wanna support me financially, there's a way by buying a t-shirt. You know, I make a few bucks out of each t-shirt, but you guys get a cool t-shirt, have a bunch of designs on there as well. Uh, right below me, there'll be the, the video of how to split the sandwich. So you have kind of everything you need to do these repairs. Now, uh, I do recommend you experiment a lot. So thanks everyone for watching. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.